Hey everybody, this is Ben with DevSlopes.com, and in this video, we are going to put together our Android build for Drenches of War. The way that we had this set up was entirely geared towards iOS, including the events that we used to catch the plane detection. So we're going to have to make a change or two to make this compatible with Android and other devices, but not to fear, Mapbox has already included the libraries we're going to need to do that. If we take a look at the Mapbox SDK, we'll notice that Mapbox has included a few things for us. They've got the Google AR core. They've got Mapbox's AR stuff. They've got the Unity AR kit plugin, and they also have a copy of the Unity AR interface. This is what we'll be using instead of the AR kit like we were doing before. So the first thing we're going to do is fix our code. Let's open up our game manager under scripts, game manager. And instead of using these events from the Unity AR session native interface, we are going to add a new event, well, two new events, and assign them to the proper library. So let's go ahead and just comment out these two for now, just so we can remember what we're doing. And we're going to say AR interface dot plane added plus equals handle plane added. And that's going to be a function that we haven't written yet. So just sit tight on that one. And we're going to say AR interface dot plane removed plus equals handle plane removed. Now we're going to scroll down to the bottom of the class and in place of the anchor added and anchor removed, we're just going to go ahead and use these. So let's say private void handle plane added. And these are going to be looking for a bounded plane. And we're just going to call that plane. As you can see, the event now works because we've got the parameter that, it, that it's expecting. Let's just go ahead and write the function to handle, handle plane removed. And it's also going to expect a bounded plane. We'll just call that plane. So we've got handle plane added with a bounded plane of plane and handle plane removed with a bounded plane named plane. And from here, things actually get pretty simple. All we care about is the game's running and started status. So all we're going to do is in the handle plane added function, we'll say game started equals true and game running equals true. Cool. And if they remove the, the plane, then we just want to say game running equals false. So the exact same way that we had this set up up here in the anchor added and anchor removed functions. Now that we're not calling these, we're going to go ahead and just remove them. And we'll remove these commented outlines as well. And now through the power of AR interface, we are going to be handling Android, iOS, and a few other platforms as well. But right now we only care about Android and iOS. Now keep in mind that the AR interface is still very much under development. So at the time that we've recorded this, this is all working. But if it's given you any issues, then you may want to check with Unity's documentation and make sure that this is still how this is working and their GitHub repo as well to make sure there are no issues. Let's head back to Unity, and now we're all set to build for Android. And that part's pretty easy. We just go to File, Build Settings, and if you're not already on the Android platform, then we want to make sure that that's where we are. Let's go check our player settings, because there are a few things that we need to ensure. First, we want to make sure that multi-threaded rendering is turned off. Second, we want to make sure that the minimum API level is set to 7.0.
API level 24 because AR was not available before then. And let's just scroll down and make sure there's nothing else we need to set up. Perfect. And then in our, in our XR settings, we want to say AR core is supported because we're going to want to make sure that AR core is supported on whatever device we're deploying this to. And that should pretty much be it for the settings. Actually, there is one other setting that we need to check for our graphics. I guess there are two settings. First, we want to turn off portrait and portrait upside down inside of the resolution and presentation. Inside of the other settings, we want to make sure that auto graphics API is turned on or we've got ES2 in our list, but we're just going to leave it at auto graphics. Cool. Now we'll just go up to file, go to build settings, and we're just going to say build. I'm pointing at my builds folder inside of the project, and I'm just going to name this test dash demo and save. Now you do want to make sure that the SDK and JDK and everything required for Android deployment is set up on your system. If not, Unity will give you some helpful errors to figure out what's going on and you can adjust as necessary. And there we go. My APK is now generated and it's ready to deploy. That was super easy, right? That's one of the things I like about Android as compared to the build process for iOS. With an iOS build, you have to go through Xcode and rebuild the project and go through a bunch of steps. Whereas Android, we can just deploy it. We can just build an APK and be done with it. Congratulations. You now have an Android build for Drenches of War, and it should be up and running. Now, again, there are a bunch of experimental technologies going on here. So if you're having any issues, then first make sure that your phone is AR compatible because only a limited number of Android devices are. Second, check and make sure that nothing funky is going on with the AR interface. But for the time being, you should be good to go. Great job following along. And I'm excited to see what you do with this and how you extend it to customize it even further and make a really awesome AR tabletop game with Mapbox's SDK. This is Ben with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.